welcome to the No Limits Podcast with your host, E. Willie. I got uh, Megan O'Grady with Blue Line Bears on today. This is uh, exciting for me because when I found out about her story, it's very touching. This girl's doing a great thing. Most young girls are out there trying to learn the new TikTok trend. She's out there making a difference in a positive way. Welcome to the podcast, Megan. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for coming on. I like this uh, quote that was on your guys' website, I think it is, helping the children of fallen law and, and oh, Jesus, I can't talk this morning. <laughs> Not no coffee. Helping the children of fallen law enforcement officers cope with the devastating loss of a parent. That's pretty heavy. I love what you guys are doing. Uh, are, you, are you working on that project right now? That is that what your lunch break is, or are you doing something else as yeah, well? I, I work at a, a place that prints T-shirts, but okay, good. And you're doing this this bear building. Is this at your home, or do you guys have a facility for it? It's at my house. Wow, that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. What's the count at uh, these days? Where how many bears have you done? It's over 750. Wow, that's so awesome. That um, I saw your your father. I'm not sure what his rank is anymore. Uh, Patrick O'Grady, is he a sergeant? Yes, is that, yes. Is that correct? Uh, shout out to your father for doing a great job raising you. I'm a father to daughters as well, and they're a little bit younger than you. Um, you're the kind of girl that I want them to look up to, and uh, it's nice having girls out there from the next generation that are doing great things like you. you. It gives me hope as a father. <laughs> I saw in an article that you um. You you had a, a wrap on your vehicle, like a detail wrap. Mm -hmm. Are you do you still have issues with having that on there, or people threatening you, or is that kind of um, calming down? We actually took the wrap off the Jeep. Hmm. We decided after a lot of threats and one close call that like actually happened in person that it wasn't worth it to keep the wrap on the Jeep anymore. So we're taking it off, but it will go back on at some point. It just we we aren't sure when yet. Yeah, that's unfortunate. You, you have to tiptoe around all that kind of nonsense because of your safety. It looked like a great job, whoever did that rap. It was very nicely done. <laughs> yeah. It must have, must have been a pain to have to take that off. Are you still getting a lot of threats? Um, Not as bad as we were in the beginning. I mean, we get one every once in a while. But, um, I mean, right now it's been an overwhelming I, I mean, we've been overwhelmed with support right now, which is that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, that's good um, to hear. Are you able to block or um, I'm sure you can block them, but are you able to report these people that are giving you grief? Yes, but a lot of them are trolls. So I don't yeah. know. How yeah, I noticed that last night I was watching some animal, wildlife uh, stuff on YouTube and I was scrolling through the comments and I was like, man, it just clicked on me, with me that a lot of these comments that are like your typical trolls are really, really young kids that are just mouthy little brats because <laughs> some of them were saying that they're under 10 years old. I'm like, who's letting their kids under 10 years old on YouTube just run their mouths like this? So you, you got to realize when you're out there, everybody listening to that, all these rude comments could be coming from a crazy adult or just a very immature little kid that just doesn't have a clue what's going on. So yep. you just got to not take it to heart and just, ignore the negativity because like you're saying the positivity is overwhelming with you guys right now which is great to hear i love to hear that um i want to just jump into our six questions real quick i don't want to hold you up because i know you got stuff to do and especially on a lunch break that's important i ask uh, six questions to every guest that's on the episodes they're just kind of fun questions mm -hmm. all right number one what movie can you watch over and over without ever getting tired of um that's a hard one <laughs> Um, have you heard of London Has Fallen? I have. I haven't seen it yet. Is that with uh, Gerard Butler? Or is that a different movie? No. Yes. Yes. It Sorry. is? Sorry. Right here. He just confirmed <laughs> it. Um, yes. I could watch that movie over and over and over and over and over again. I'll have to check it out then. Who's with you? Is it your father or your mother? My dad. Can I say hi to him? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hey, how, are you? how you doing? I'm good. Uh, thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you for your your line of work. I really appreciate you. One of my best friends is a cop and been in the business for a long time. And he's, uh, we did an episode of my other podcast about how hard it is to be a police officer right now. And I can't imagine what you guys are going through. I really appreciate everything you guys are doing. It's a, it's a rough time for you guys, for sure. Definitely very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> 
Do you do you dread going to work these days? Or are you still you still staying optimistic? Uh, we're very lucky in the community that I work in because we we get support. And when somebody hates us, the supporters come out and they, they back us. Awesome. That's great to hear. You're in Florida. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much for your, for what you do. I appreciate you. Oh, no problem. The background is my my uh, signal to sh show you my support. <laughs> I'm starting a new trend with your episode. I'm going to start doing a background for every for every guest that I have that fits them. So you're the first one of those trends. To That's start cool. About. Yep. All right. So London Has Fallen is your number one movie to watch over and over? Yes. Number two, what's the best practical joke that you've played on someone or that was played on you? Oh, gosh. I'm not sure. I don't think I have one. Did your dad play jokes on you? jokes on her all the time yeah he plays jokes on me all the time What's a good oh. one? <laughs> um there's one where there's a spider that i kept seeing everywhere and i couldn't kill it and um <laughs> so he took a cup and put it like on my nightstand and r had like a sticky note on the top of it that said don't pick up the cup <laughs> I picked it up and there was a plastic spider in there, but it looked really real. <laughs> and I like, I don't think I've ever been so scared of someone, but that's probably like it. <laughs> the only one I can think of right now. Yeah. Your dad's awesome. I do the same thing to my kids and my wife as well. It's, it's, <clears throat> and my dad did it to us too. So it's just part of the thing. Yes, it is. I got, um, we play jump scares all the time. My family and all. My my girls are good about it, but my oldest girl is starting to get to the point where she's making packs with me that I can't do with her anymore because she gets too freaked out and she doesn't yeah. feel safe walking around corners, but my youngest gets a kick out of it, so it's still fun. <laughs> if, uh, let's see, number three, if you could time travel one time there and back, which time period would you choose? Um, curious, curious on your dad's answer for this one as well. If he, I don't know if he could hear the question or not. Yeah, he heard. Um... Let me think. Okay, someone that I really look up to, but I never got to like actually, I guess, see in my lifetime was Ronald Reagan. So I'd probably go back to like a time where he was president because I feel like he's a really cool guy. Yeah, that's cool. So you'd go back to when he was president to meet him? Yes. Or just to live in that era? He was actually president when I was born uh, in the 80s, but I never met him either. <laughs> <laughs> what about your father? What, what, where would he go? Backwards or forwards? I would just love to go back to the 80s. To the 80s? <laughs> um, you know, in the music, you know, it was, you know, it was either crazy or it was, you know, harder white music. So yeah. I was a heavy metal fan at the time. So what's some of your favorite bands? Oh, got to go Poison, Motley Crue, you know, Metallica coming in later. Oh, yeah. Metallica's so, great. Yeah. I just started a Spotify playlist with all that kind of music and then introducing it to my kids and my wife because they don't really know it that well, but there's nothing like that music. It's, it's a great era. Oh, yeah, definitely. So the 80s, well, basically both of y'all said the 80s. Ronald yes. Reagan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like father, like daughter. All right, number four. What is something that really irritates you? Mm. Something that really irritates me. It's like a pet peeve, but when people chew with their mouth open. Oh, I feel you on that. That's so annoying. My sister will punch somebody for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> She's super sensitive, that kind of stuff. And I grew up with her. And man, if we anybody did anything like that, you better look out. She's coming for you. <laughs> what about you? Uh, hearing the phrase, that's what you signed up to do. Oh, I bet. Yeah. That's what you've asked for. Oh. Yeah, that's a a really rude comment to make. Yeah, that's that's my number one pet peeve when people say that to me. Um, I don't doubt it. Number five, what is an item in your home that is special to you for sentimental reasons? Mm. Um, I would say the letter from the president that I have that hangs in my room. It's, you have a letter from the president? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, I got it, what was it, two years ago? Two years ago. 
and um, it just hangs in my room, but it's very special and near and dear to my heart. I bet. That's really cool. That's good. That's awesome. What about you, sir? I'm trying to think. That's a really tough question. There are so I many. I forgot I to say it has to be an, like an item too, not your, your wife or your kids or anything. Cause right. I, I <laughs> obvious <quite>. first choice. <laughs> well, during Christmas time, we always put out nutcrackers and there were a couple that were the original inspiration that were my wife's grandmothers. Oh, so wow. we take extra care of those and we put them up and those are one of the first ones we always put up and take down. Cool. Yeah. That's something you definitely don't want to lose. That's awesome. All right, number six, last question for both of you guys. What accomplishment are you most proud of? Um, I would say my biggest accomplishment that I'm proud of is just getting Blue Line Bears to where it is today because when I started it, I really had no idea what I, what I was doing at all. And like my family even had no idea what we were doing. And um, I think together, all of us, really managed to bring it to what it is today and I'm really proud of what we've accomplished as a family yeah that's that's beautiful it's definitely something to be proud of were you um stitching or cross stitching before that and then got into it or you just kind of dove in I just dove in I just dove in um so when I started blind bears I actually had no idea how to sew at all and I didn't know how to embroider or any of that stuff. So my grandma taught me how to sew. Didn't have a machine. And then I didn't have a machine or anything. All freehand, huh? Yeah. Um, so I used GoFundMe to raise money to get a machine and everything. And then my grandma taught me how to sew and I used YouTube to learn how to embroider. That's awesome. That's that's really cool to hear. You Thank got, a, you got a, a, a mission in your mind. You stuck to it and got it done. It's very impressive with your age group for sure. What about you, sir? I'm going to have to say Blind Bears as well. I mean, this has been a huge experience for our family. You never know where something's going to go when you start it, especially something where we had no idea what we were doing. But we had people along the way who, you know, point you in the right direction, get you where you're supposed to go. And once you start something like this, you don't know if it's going to be a year, a couple months. Is this even going to work out? But after it started going and it started to gain traction and just picked up and gained speed, it became something that was so amazing that we've connected with so many, you know, really amazing people outside of law enforcement, you know, families that we've dealt with and other companies and other nonprofits. It just becomes like a family of people that you start a new family with. Yeah, that's really cool. Do you have any siblings? Other I have two brothers. Two brothers, one, so one brother. yes. That's cool. So you got some protection. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Uh, where can we uh, support you guys, and what, what what plugs do you have? So we have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, which are all Blue Line Bears, and then in our um, in our parlor, which is very small, but. Um, also Blue Line Bears. And then our website is bluelinebears.org. Awesome. Well, I'll cut you loose. I don't want to take up your time. I know you got you're on your lunch break. I appreciate you fitting me in. I just wanted to get it out there that this podcast supports you guys. And I'm very happy to hear that you're getting more positive feedback now instead of negative because that was infuriating to hear that from, from a, the initial standpoint. Officer um, Sergeant Patrick O'Grady, you're doing a great job parenting. You're you're a role model for me as well as a parent. I, I appreciate you in every aspect. Thank awesome. you guys for coming on. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Y'all have a good one. Right, see you. See you.